Ah, professional wrestling. In some ways, it's kind of like a magic show. We know all these fellas and ladies aren't really trying to hurt each other, but we suspend disbelief and have a grand old time. However, every now and then, production will slip up and show us or say something they really shouldn't have. I'm Senior Siete for Seven Wrestling, and let's take a look at seven times the WWE accidentally spoiled their own show. Now, before we get into this, we appreciate your support, so if you enjoy this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and people's elbow that notification bell. Number 1. Mega Powers Mess Up The Rock and John Cena didn't invent taking a whole year to build a WrestleMania main event, no, no. The Mega Powers explosion is the original year-long story that started with the Hulkster coming to the aid of his Mega Power buddy Randy Savage in the main event of WrestleMania 4 to help him claim the WWE title in a tournament final against the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. From there, the duo would square off against DiBiase and the big nasty Wharton-fested Andre the Giant at the first ever SummerSlam. It was here that the seeds were planted that Hogan had lust in his heart for the Macho Man's manager, the lovely Miss Elizabeth. They would hint at dissension between the duo, with Savage getting a little bit antsy every time the Immortal One would get too chummy with his manager. And it all came to a head on an NBC primetime television special where the Mega Powers were scheduled to take on the Big Boss Man and Akeem on the main event. Haha, -ha, Akeem the African Dream, who was portrayed by a white guy. That's probably a topic for another list. Oh, and Bossman and Akeem were collectively known as the Twin Towers. Another topic for another list. Don't worry, I'm taking notes. Anyhow, during the match, the Macho Man would be tossed from the ring, colliding with Elizabeth and knocking her out cold. And quick note, I don't know if Elizabeth took many bumps, but I certainly can't recall very many, but this was awesome. Well done. Hulkster would scoop up Elizabeth and take her backstage to receive medical treatment, while Savage would be left alone to fend off the uh, double tall buildings. Once she was safely with the medical staff, Hogan, probably figuring since this was on NBC, it was his chance to show off his acting chops, proceeded to cry over her and beg for her safe recovery. It was... it was something. And maybe we would have been moved to tears by this Emmy-worthy performance if he didn't stop during this rant to turn to someone off camera and say, I need a countdown or something. Ha <laughs> ha Live TV! But that wouldn't be the only miscue, as once Elizabeth regained consciousness, she'd beg Hogan to return to Randy's side. Hogan would do as he was told, only for a frustrated savage to slap Hogan right in the face and leave in a huff. Left alone with the two tall skyscrapers, Hogan would get squashed like a bug and pinned. Just kidding. Hogan would pin Akeem all by himself and handcuff the boss man to his manager, the wrestling pimp known as Slick. Uh-huh, uh huh uh uh-huh. Okay, Hogan would return to the medical area where he would be accused by Savage of having lust in his heart for Elizabeth. Savage would eventually cream Hogan with the title belt as the situation would devolve into chaos. Now, the scripted story was that Elizabeth would try to stop Savage from hurting Hogan further, where Savage would toss his beloved manager to the ground, making it clear as crystal who was the heel in the situation. And before Savage could end Hulkamania forever, Brutus and Barbara Beefcake would come to Hogan's aid. But Beefcake would screw up his cue and come to Hogan's aid long before Savage had bounced Elizabeth. And instead of just going with it, he just kind of, you know, sheepishly backed away. Ah, live TV. Number 2. Spoiling the Mania Main Event During WrestleMania 40, Michael Cole made it a point to mention that this was his 23rd WrestleMania behind the microphone and that his first one was also in Philadelphia at WrestleMania 15. He probably has so many fond memories of that night, like Butterbean knocking Bart Gunn's head into the 13th row, or China returning to DX for about 30 minutes before Triple H and her would split and join the corporation, or, you know, the worst Hell in a Cell of all time. Okay, maybe the second worst. But one thing I'm sure he'd love to forget is the promo he had to give in the middle of the show for a home shopping network program that was going to happen immediately following the event. Cole would say, it's the show after the show, post-game comments, we'll hear from the new WWF champion, you'll have a chance to buy exclusive merchandise right after WrestleMania. Did you catch it? Yeah. Cole referenced a new WWF champion long before the main event had taken place, before Stone Cold Steve Austin had defeated The Rock to in fact become the new WWF champion. Yikes. 
Maybe Michael Cole was lucky to get a second WrestleMania after that mistake. Number 3. The Amazing Disappearing Crash Pad Mick Foley absolutely set the bar for horrific falls back in 1998 when The Undertaker launched him off of the Hell in a Cell. The only thing to break the Hardcore Legends fall was a ringside table. Not exactly the softest of landings, and honestly, there's no trick there. Try to land as flat as possible and get ready for some real pain. So it's completely understandable that death-defying jumps going forward would end up on some kind of crash pad, like this one at SummerSlam 2000 where Steve Blackman caused Shane McMahon to fall off of the Titan Tron, or when Shane McMahon jumped off of the Hell in the Cell at WrestleMania 32, or when The Miz suplexed Shane McMahon off of a giant platform at WrestleMania 35. Wow, Shane McMahon certainly has a unique style, doesn't he? Horrible punches followed by amazing stunts. It's weird that being in a legitimate helicopter accident is like the 12th craziest thing he's ever survived. Anyhow, Jeff Hardy's known for his daredevil stunts as well, and they tried to get a little crafty with the crash pad this time around. Usually it's covered with some kind of wood to make it look a little more dangerous than it really is, but at the One Night Stand pay-per-view in 2008, they tried something a little bit different. Hardy was squaring off in a false count anywhere match against Umaga when the brawl took them back into the parking lot. Hardy would climb a production truck for some reason and Umaga would follow him. Hardy kicked Umaga off seemingly down on the concrete below, but we couldn't see the landing so it was safe to assume that Umaga had landed on some kind of pad. Hardy would then leap onto Umaga with his trademark swanton bomb. The key part of this trick was that the crash pad would need to be removed by the time the camera came around to pick up the pinfall and the production crew managed to do it without being noticed. Well done, team. Well, maybe not so well done as the crash pad was clearly visible in the background. You guys could have dragged it 20 feet further. Number four, the people under the ring. The WWE once ran a bizarre angle where we learned that Finley's leprechaun son, Hornswoggle, wait, hold on. Okay. Apparently, not only did Hornswoggle live under the ring, but there was a whole underground community of little people who lived under there with him. Of course, we'd learn this when Degeneration X would crawl under the ring, only to be put on trial by, oh man, the Little People's Court. Genius. And I know what you're thinking, this was just an excuse to make a bunch of short jokes, and yeah, you're 100% right, that's all it was. And while this was ridiculous and dumb and probably insulting to the little person community, there was some truth to it. Oftentimes, there are people under the ring. And I don't mean like when a wrestler is waiting under the ring to make a surprise entrance, or when Titus O'Neil accidentally performs the funniest blooper of all time. What I mean is that occasionally there are stagehands or crew members who are under the ring to facilitate certain stunts and they get caught on camera. Perfect example of this is the Hell of Cell match between Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre back in 2021. During the bout, Lashley chokeslammed McIntyre to the outside. Now, you won't see this in the cut that exists on the WWE Network, but in the original airing, as McIntyre laid there selling, a mysterious hand can be seen moving table rubble closer to McIntyre. Did they move a uh, crash mat? Probably. It was the COVID era and they were able to use a lot more smoke and mirrors without a live crowd, but some say the mysterious people exist under the ring to this day. Number five, cheat sheets. The promo battles between John Cena and The Rock that took place in the build-up to WrestleMania 27 were absolutely legendary. You've got The Rock cutting a promo on this adorable little Cena fan, John Cena going back to his doctor of Thugonomics roots to cut a battle rap, the Rock accusing John Cena of looking like a bowl of fruity pebbles due to his many different colored shirts, which, fun fact, helped John Cena land an endorsement with Post Cereals. But maybe the most controversial of these promos was when Cena broke the fourth wall and called The Rock out for having notes about his promo written on his wrist. And yeah, there it is, plain as day, the people's champ with a cheat sheet written on his arm. Was it a breach of professionalism that Cena called him out on this, an attempt to make the grudge more real? Who knows the truth, but Cena has shown remorse over the years saying on Logan Paul's and Paulson podcast that it was unprofessional for him to use that against The Rock without The Rock's prior knowledge, which is fair. You're supposed to be working together, not working against your opponent. But in The Rock's defense, it's not like he's the only person guilty of that old trick. Number six, the horror of Kane. This man is a menace. He dug up The Undertaker's deceased parents and brought them to an episode of Monday Night Raw. He electrocuted Shane McMahon's nether regions, and who even knows what he actually did to poor, poor Katie Vick? So, when Eve Torres and Zack Ryder became the target of his dastardly ways, you knew it wasn't going to turn out well for either of them. For example, poor injured Zack was tossed off of a stage while in a wheelchair, powerless to stop that tragic fall. 
and Eve tore as she was going to be kidnapped in an ambulance where Cain would proceed to do God knows what to her, but apparently the devil's favorite demon and Miss Torres didn't get a proper countdown to the live shot because what we saw was Eve Torres gingerly entering the ambulance at her own power while Kane held the door open like a gentleman. Aww. From there, Kane would be poked by someone holding a script to let him know they were actually live and that he was supposed to be a menacing monster and not a polite co-worker. Oddly enough, this miscue wasn't the worst part of the segment. The worst part was when John Cena would come to her rescue and then they'd kiss in front of her then-boyfriend Zack Ryder. I see the hustle, but where's the loyalty and respect, John? Number 7. Backstage Blunders There's a lot going on the David W. pay-per-view, rehearsals, pre-tapes, meetings, you name it, so occasionally something's going to slip through the cracks. You know, like a continuity error. If you're unfamiliar with that term, it's any visual or audible inconsistency with on-screen characters, you know, so similar shots and scenes look different, like, you know, a gas-powered chariot showing up in the Gladiator, or a Starbucks cup in Game of Thrones, or Dorothy's hair being different lengths in The Wizard of Oz, so... At the 1998 Rock Bottom pay-per-view, when Vince McMahon came out of a room where he was just talking to Mankind, and Mankind just so happened to be down the hall, that was a continuity mistake. Even worse is when Mankind is seen casually chatting with The Rock, you know, the man he was facing that night and someone he had been participating in a blood feud with. Yeah, fourth ball shattered. Well, there's our list. Did we forget any other times WWE accidentally spoiled their own show? If so, please leave them in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoy this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and like drop that notification bell. Until next time, I'm Senior Siete for Seven Wrestling saying bye-bye.